Hey guys, it's Misha and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to talk about Smile 2 today because I have been wanting to see this movie ever since I saw the first Smile. I really liked it. But honestly, after seeing the trailer for the second Smile, I was a bit skeptical because it didn't look that good and also sequels tend to be worse. But Smile 2 did surprise me. I'm gonna tell you all about it. It was definitely a psychological horror film as was the first movie, right? But this one focused even more on mental health, which I really like those kinds of movies that are more, you know, psychological, instead of relying on constant jump scares and there were many in this film as well but it's not just that also the movie is a lot gorier than the first one and of course spoiler alert if you have not seen the film and don't want spoilers in smile 2 our main character is sky riley and she is played by naomi scott now i have not seen anything with naomi scott in it before and she really blew me away like her acting was amazing she plays this world famous pop star here who is recovering from addiction she was also recently in a car crash that killed this uh guy paul Hudson who she was dating and in the beginning we are shown this interview with Drew Barrymore. I love the way that they filmed these scenes because they would get really close sometimes and it was done in a way that really was unsettling, creepy. We start with Joel from the first movie and he is trying to pass on the smile curse to someone else because he currently has it right and he goes to these criminals. He wants to give it to them but unfortunately both die but there's another man there that he gives the curse to and he was there to buy drugs and that man's name is Lewis and he happens to to be the former drug dealer of our main character, Sky Riley. Now, as Joel is leaving, he gets run over and we're shown that in detail. Like I said, very gory. Also throughout the film, I'd say it feels purposeful, right? Like some horror films, they just throw gore at you like for shock value and then you're kind of expecting it and it's not very impactful. I'd say almost every bloody moment here just adds to the film, not just there for, oh, haha, blood, guts, whatever. Back to our main character. She is dancing. She is practicing. We can see that she's very stressed out. There's a lot of pressure and she's dealing with a lot of pain from her crash. She has PTSD, obviously, but she's also having these physical symptoms. Also something that bothered me throughout the film, just like when I watched Thanksgiving last year, I think. F-bombs throughout the entire film. I don't know what's going on with recent horror films, especially. Every other word is fuck this, fuck that, fuck you. I don't know, like normal people don't talk like that. Like every now and then I get it, it's fine, but it doesn't add anything. It just becomes annoying after a while. It's like she even had a journal, Sky, right? And it was like fuck you or something on the journal. Okay, so as I said, Lewis is Skylar's drug dealer, so she cannot handle the pain, she needs Vicodin, and she goes over to his place to get the drugs. I was reminded of House MD when she mentioned Vicodin, and turns out Peter Jacobson from House was in this film. He played a nurse called Morris, and in the first movie, there was Cal Penn, and he was also a doctor from House, in case you watch that show. Anyway, she's at his place, she wants the drugs, things don't go as planned, obviously, and since he has this curse, he ends up killing himself in front of Sky, and as we know, that's how you train transfer the smile and he does so in a very graphic way chunks of his face are falling off he gets a weight basically and slams it into his face multiple times and this guy is just kind of watching in shock and then yeah so she has the curse now she's about to call the cops but she realized no that would mean the end of her career priorities <laughs> so yeah she ends up not calling the cops leaves the scene instead later on she decides to contact her old friend Gemma and throughout the film we get the impression something terrible must have happened she must have said something truly awful to Gemma so I feel like it was very underwhelming unless I missed something but I think she just called her an opportunistic bitch, which yeah isn't great but I don't know it seemed that something really really bad happened and that's it. Okay. She calls her up. She says, Gemma, could you come over? I know we had this big fight, but you're the only person that I can talk to. And I'm going through a lot. And Gemma says, sure. So she comes over. As she's having these hallucinations, she's seeing Gemma with the smile. We don't know what's real and what's not. Throughout the film, we keep getting these rehearsals. I thought it was great. I thought she really seemed like an actual pop star. She kind of looked like Lady Gaga in a few shots, in my opinion, like with the red lipstick, the blonde, you know, short hair, and just her outfits, like the over-the-top glam outfit. Outfits. We also get to see a ton of creepy fan interactions. So she has these meet and greets and there's this one guy, right, that wants to take a photo with her. And he's like, you have soft skin. I can tell you're sad inside. We could be so happy together, like actually insane, right? So we get to see what life is like as a pop star, all the stress and pressure she's under. And then her mom, who is also her manager, they have a very toxic relationship because all this mom cares about is the tour, right? All they talk about constantly is this tour. And she's seeing her daughter 
daughter is struggling, she's unwell. She does mention, oh, we could get sued if you don't attend, this and that. But at the same time, it seems like all she cares about is fame and money and not her, you know, daughter's mental health. So she makes her attend this event for underprivileged kids, I think that's what it was. And that was a mistake because the teleprompter broke and she went full Kamala mode. She could not think of anything to say. So instead she goes on a bit of a rant and she speaks about how fame won't fix anything, right? How we tend to think that, oh, if we only had more money, more fame, then we would finally be happy, but that's not how it works. But obviously that's not what the attendees want to hear. And everyone was looking at her in horror. And then the teleprompter she sees, it says Paul Hudson is, you know, going to be there or something and she realizes realizes that something's wrong. She sees him in the crowd smiling creepily at her and she ends up causing this old woman on stage to fall. And I know that was supposed to be sad, but that was actually really funny. Uh, a few people chuckled in the theater. She also keeps getting these anonymous messages from someone claiming that he can help her, right? So he's like, come meet me here. So she meets him at a pub. And it turns out to be this nurse named Morris who claims that his brother died from the smile. And he has been tracking down the curse and he wants to help her because no one previously has listened to him, but he knows how he can end it, right? He wants to stop her heart temporarily because he thinks that if you die an unrelated death you'll get rid of the curse and then he can bring her back sky doesn't want to team up but i think that they could have given a better reason for sky to say no there's no way i'm doing that because seeing these hallucinations she's terrified things have never been worse why not agree this whole movie we're wondering what is a hallucination what's real how could this person have that much information unless it was like the smile curse and he wasn't real but i don't think that was the case i'm just thinking she should have had a better reason to say no because all she said is like, no, that's crazy. How can I trust you? And she leaves. She goes back to her apartment. I'm not sure if it was supposed to be scary, but it came off as hilarious. She has these background dancers. They all have the smile and they're in her apartment and they do this synchronized um, dance number thing <laughs> and attack her basically and cause her to have a concussion. But it was just really weird in a funny way. We also get a flashback to the fight with Paul Hudson in the car and they're both on drugs. He calls her psycho and she ends up causing the car crash. And I think this film knows how to build tension and actually get you with some jump scares, which almost never get me just because I've seen so many horror movies, right? But there were a few scenes here that actually were pretty good jump scares. I remember when she was looking through her phone and it was something that Lewis had posted and it's like, you can't look away. He's walking through the dark and he's trying to find, you know, the smile and you think it's over, but then the jump scare actually happens. So a little later on, she ends up waking up in this wellness facility. She sees that her mom is there. They get into a bit of a fight again, but also her mom is constantly talking about the tour, which is personally driving me insane. Like you can see her daughter is suffering. What tour? But her mom, that's all she cares about. Anyways, the smile causes her to kill the mom. So to Sky, it seems like the mom is doing it herself, but then she looks down and she sees that glass is in her own hand, right? So she wants to escape this facility and she actually does. She gets the gun from a security guard and this part was funny. I think it was Joshua, her assistant. It was someone watching her while she was trying to escape and they're like, think about the tour. And she's like, fuck the tour. So she gets the gun and she leaves. Gemma's there in the car. She says, come in. And she asked Gemma to drive her to meet this doctor because she now wants to agree to the plan. At first, Gemma's freaked out. She's thinking, what's going on? There's no way I'm driving you. But then she's like, yeah, you know what? Ride or die. Let's do it. To myself, I'm thinking, what? Like, I'm sorry. I don't care how close we are. You could be my best friend. If I see that you just escaped a psych ward and you have blood all over your clothing, I am not driving you anywhere. <laughs> you are not getting in the car. But Gemma's like, yeah, you know, we stick together. Ride or die. So she takes her. But then she sees on her phone that Gemma's calling her. She picks up the phone. Gem informs her she has not been to her house in a year. This is not the real Gemma that's driving the car. She looks over, she's smiling, of course. So this is fake Gemma, the smile Gemma. She does survive that encounter though, and she meets with Morris, the nurse. They're in this building. He's explaining how he's gonna do the procedure. I thought this part was weird. He tells her, put on this clean gown because she was already in the bloodied gown. Why? You know, because if we're worried about germs, you're in a coat. Maybe I'm missing something. I don't understand the significance of that or the point really. But yeah, he makes her put on this new gown. She gets on the table, but then she sees blood dripping down. She looks up and it is her when she was in the car crash and she battles with herself. And this is Smile Sky. 
And <laughs> I liked it. I liked the scene because there was a moment when the smile, the creature, whatever you want to call it, demon, it had these huge eyes. And I guess to some that could be seen as comical, cartoonish or something. But there's just something about the style they chose for the smile that I really liked. And I thought that was really cool. And I actually wish that they would have shown the smile more but it was just at the end. So she's fighting, but she loses and the smile was in control the entire time. She could not overcome mental health issues. I think that's what it's supposed to symbolize, right? Like the negative intrusive thoughts or whatever. That was kind of dumb at the end because Morris just leaves and we don't hear from him again. So I don't really know what was real again, what wasn't real. And actually her old self pushes her into this freezer. She emerges and she's on stage. Now it gets even gorier. There's a lot of body horror. We see her old self again and where she has the scar from the car crash. I'm not gonna explain it in too much detail, but let's say the smile creature emerges. It's this skinless, terrifying looking creature on stage that only she seems to see. And then we are shown the audience and they're all looking at the stage in horror. We don't see what's actually happening. They're just looking and then they start screaming and then we're shown what happened. She basically shoved the end of the microphone into her eye. So she's not having a good day. And we see that the smile has infected all of them as well. That's how I read it, right? Because they all just kind of stood there in shock just like she did when she saw Lewis kill himself and then she got the smile, right? So I think she infected all of them. And I think that could symbolize how insecurities could pass on, you know, from influencers, pop stars, celebrities that we watch, maybe. That's how I interpreted it, right? But again, the ending leaves you questioning everything, what was real. And I typically don't like that. I feel like they could have been more direct and clear about what actually happened. Overall, I really enjoyed the movie. I just have some questions, some things weren't clear. Like if Gemma wasn't there, how did she have a conversation with Skye's mom when it was just her and the mom? That wouldn't make sense. So it's just a bit confusing. Also, I feel like the movie was too long. They didn't need to make it two hours. It could have been over in like an hour 45. But overall, like I said, I like it. I liked the clever take on mental health and fame. It's nothing that we haven't seen before. Like I can't say, wow, that's such a new concept, right? No one's done that. The way that it was shot, the jump scares, the amazing lead performance, I think it made it a great movie. And if you like the first one and you're into psychological horror, I think you would like it too. And I hope there's a smile three because I still think there's so much more to explore with this concept. I love how they portray the actual creature. I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. And that's all for today's video, guys. Please comment below if you watch this smile what did you think or if you would watch it also remember to like subscribe and hit the notification bell and i will see you all in the next video bye